Hi, this is Frank Carmody. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at Autodesk Inventor Professional thir 2000, uh, Autodesk Inventor Professional 2013, uh, and we're going to be taking a look at uh, a few of the um, uh, 3D modeling tools today. So I went ahead and opened up a new part file uh, by clicking the drop down and then clicking Part. I'm going to go ahead and save this off uh, right when I open it. Okay, uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at the Revolve tool. Um, so, of course, our very first thing is to create a 2D sketch. Okay, and now, it, once you start getting into these uh, 3D uh, drawing tools, it is important which plane you select for your 3D sketch. Now, I've selected the uh, YX plane there, uh, which is fine. Um, okay, so our revolve, we're going to do it two different ways. We're going to take a look at revolving uh, using a line outside of the shape, and we're going to use it. We're going to uh, do a line connected to the shape. So in our first case, let's go ahead and we're going to make a, um, a circle and a line. Okay. Now this uh, the shape that we're going to use, it could be anything. So notice that if I want to make a more complicated shape, of course I can use the trim tool, which is right up here, to kind of uh, basically add together my shapes first and then trim off the lines that I don't want, leaving the shape that I do want. <coughs> okay, so this is a case where we're going to um, right click, finish 2D sketch, and now we're now we have what we need to do our revolve. So we're going to click on revolve. Um, we're going to select the area first. Okay, now in this case, when you when you first do these these shapes, it's sometimes easier to open up the dialog box, and the reason for this is the are these colored arrows. So in this case. It, it kind of shows you what you need to select in order to make the 3D modeling happen. So if this is closed, the heads up display over here doesn't really give you a lot of information when you're first starting out. So um, it's more of the, the fastest way to do it versus the most descriptive way to do it. So let's go ahead and open up our, uh, our dialog here. So notice we have two red arrows. So that means we have to select two different things to make the 3D modeling feature work. So we're going to select our profile, which means the thing we want to revolve. And we're going to select the axis, which means the line around which we're going to revolve that shape. Okay. Now if everything goes right, it should give you a preview just like it did for me right there. So if you select two things, it should preview just fine. If you don't see the preview, it's a good indication that you're going that something has gone wrong and you're going to get an error. Okay, so we go ahead and we click OK. And that is our first revolve right there. Okay, so that is our first uh, our first revolve. Okay, now we're going to go ahead um, and uh, we're going to create a work plane this time. Um, and the work plane is helpful because when we did the extrude uh, video, if you watch that, uh, you notice that we can create a sketch on the shape that we've already 3D modeled. Okay, the problem with this shape is that there aren't any flat surfaces. So if I go ahead and I try to create a 2D sketch, notice that, well, here we go. There is one there on the bottom. So I could create a 2D sketch there. But notice that's my only one. So if I don't want to put a sketch there, I'm at a loss as to where I can put my sketch. So let's go ahead and get out of the 2D sketch tool. Let's take a look at how to create a work plane. So to create my second revolve here, I want to create a work plane. Okay, so let's say that I want to, um, uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to my Explorer uh, bar. I'm going to open up the origin, and I'm going to click on one of these uh, planes. So inside the origin, I'm going to make this plane up here. So let's say I want to do it on the XY plane. Okay, notice that once I click it, that plane will appear. Now that's, that's just a placeholder for Inventor. So that's just showing me where the XY plane is. That doesn't have anything on it, and I can't apply a sketch to it directly. What I need to do is I need to create a work plane. So up here in Work Features, I click on the Plane tool. Notice how my the plane that I've already selected is still there. Okay, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this little gold uh, a circle on the edge of the work plane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click, and I'm just going to move my mouse a little tiny bit. Okay. And I can move it up and then back. And notice, notice that, well, 
it's not going to let me do it. But notice in the blue writing on the right, to the right of my mouse, it says 0, 0.000 inches. That's the offset from the origin. Okay, so as I'm doing this here, I can offset this work plane from the origin. Okay, I can even let it go and I can type in uh, the offset that I want. Okay, now I'm going to leave it at zero in this case, but you could offset it up or down and, and that'll be useful later on. So let's go ahead and uh, click the, gr the green check. Okay, so now I that I have my work plane placed, I can go ahead and I can add a 2D sketch onto that work plane. And how you do this is you click the 2D sketch tool and then you click the edge of the work plane. Notice you see it highlighting when I go over that yellow edge there, the gold edge. Okay, the other way to do this is to select the work plane first and then click create 2D sketch. And both will result in the same thing. Okay, so now I have my sketch plane. All right. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, um, uh, we're going to use the actual uh, shape itself to revolve around one of its edges. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. So let's say I have this shape. I make kind of a more complicated shape out of it. Okay, I'm going to trim off the excess that I need. In general, my sketches, I've found it's best to just create kind of one closed shape per sketch. Uh, that's what works best for me. Uh, you might discover something different. Okay, so I make my, I make my, uh, my shape. It can be any shape. It needs to have a, at least one straight edge on it to revolve off of, though. If you're going to use, if you're going to revolve on the shape itself, I click OK. I right-click, finish 2D sketch, and now I can go ahead and revolve. Okay, now there's only one profile, so notice that uh, because I opened up the dialog before, uh, that my dialog stays is open. Now let's say that you don't want to use the dialog anymore, though. Okay, so basically you click, you click this profile button here. Okay, on the heads-up display. You click the profile button and click here. Then you click on the axis, and then you would select the axis you want to revolve around. Okay, so we can choose any of these straight lines to revolve around. Um, this, these two up here would be problematic because it would self-intersect. Okay, but we can choose any of these three lines will work. Okay, so I go ahead and click one of the lines. Notice that you can still see the original shape highlighted inside of the, the um, revolve shape. And notice that the um, that line that I clicked on becomes that axis of rotation inside. So that gives me a nice uh, round shape there. Okay, I'm going to click the green check. Okay, so that is our revolve. Um, and let's go ahead and save this off. I'm going to change the name slightly. Uh, we're going to move on to our next tool. So I'm going to click um, Save As. And we're going to save it as Lesson 6 Revolve. And save. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and close out. Uh, we're going to start a new uh, part for this video. Okay, so it's it, just because it's easiest not to keep adding on three dimensional uh, features into the same part unless necessary. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our um, our loft. Okay, uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a a 2D sketch. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna make it on the uh, ZX plane this time, so the one that's flat on your screen. Okay, and all we're gonna do to test this out here, we're gonna create three sh three sketches on three separate work planes, just as a as a test here. Okay, so our first one is gonna be a square. Now, usually to save time, I wouldn't dimension, but in this case, I am. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and make this a really really a square. We're gonna make it four inches. Oops, zoom all by four inches. Okay, so there we have it. Four inches by four inches. Right click. Okay. Finish sketch. Okay, so I have my first sketch here. Right. Now the trick with um, with the loft is that you can't go too far out. The 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 you'll see you'll see what I mean in a couple minutes here. But the you can't go too far off from your other shape. So the next step in making the loft is we need at least two sketches to make the loft. We're going to do three. You need at least two. Okay. So our next step here is to make a work plane just like we did before. Okay. So it, in this case we want to make it on the same axes that uh, we used in our original sketch. So in that case it's the XZ plane. 
Okay, so we make we highlight the XZ plane in our Explorer. We come over, click Work Plane. We pull the XZ plane up. In this case, I'm going to make it a, a two-inch offset. Okay, I do that by just dragging it up. Click the green check. Now I have my second work plane. And now we're going to go ahead, select the work plane, click 2D sketch. So now we're in our 2D sketch on top of our original sketch. So we're putting multiple sketches in our 3D space here. Okay, now the second one, for my second sketch, I'm just going to do kind of an offset uh, rectangle. Now, you can do all kinds of different things on this sketch, okay? Uh, but I'm just going to do kind of an offset rectangle that I think will work. Uh, I've been wrong before, so uh, some experimentation is uh, definitely necessary, um, which, of course, is the fun of it. So, um, all right, so we have 3.5 inches here. We have 2 inches. Um, okay, so I'm going to right click, finish 2D sketch. Okay, so now I have two 2D sketches that's starting to look a little bit complicated here. Uh, if you zoom out a little bit, it looks a little less complicated. Okay, so you can see I've got my two 2D sketches. One is slightly smaller than the other. Um, they don't have to be smaller, um, but in our case they are. So we're going to create a third 2D sketch. So we click the same XZ plane again in the origin. We click on our plane tool. We offset this one. This time we're going to offset it up to four inches. Okay, we're going to click the green check. So now I have three work planes. Okay, so you see there we have our three sketches, our three work planes. We're going to click our 2D sketch tool. We're going to make the work plane highlight by going over the edge. Click on it, and now we're in our 2D sketch. Um, and we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to make a circle up here. Okay, kind of a smallish circle. Um, and hopefully this will work. Uh, the uh, the this feature can get a little bit it's a little bit hard to judge as to whether the feature will work or not uh, sometimes. So uh, because if it if it can't if the material that the virtual material that uh, in, that inventor is creating you know breaks at any point uh, then it won't work if it can't create the curve or if the curves intersect between the parts. So. Um, okay, so I'm just going to make this 0.5 inches. Click OK. All right, right click OK. Right click, finish sketch. Okay, so we have our three sketches. Now we're going to go ahead and create our loft. Okay, so we're going to click on our loft. Notice we don't get a heads up display here. And we're just going to select our. Um, we're going to select our areas in order. Okay, our sketches in order. So we go bottom, middle and top. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And there we have our finished uh, finished shape. And you can see that you can get very creative with this with this loft tool um, as far as what kind of complex shapes you can create. Um, and we can also go ahead, if you don't like the look of these work planes, we can go ahead and right click on the work plane and we can unclick visible. Okay, so we can uncheck visible on the work planes to get rid of those. And let's go ahead and take a look at the material. So, <coughs> excuse me, we're getting to the point where, you know, things are starting to look pretty cool. Um, and let's take a look at uh, what types of materials are available. Now, you might, if your screen is small, you might have this little arrows here. And notice where default is highlighted. That's a default material. Okay. It's kind of fun to start once you get into some more complicated stuff to start making it look. Uh, kind of look like different materials, especially if you're going to be putting these together. You might want to make them representative of what they would be uh, created from in the final product. So in this case, let's say this is gold. We can make it gold. Okay. Um, we can also do other, they're, they're you know, probably I'm estimating 100 materials, 150, 200 materials. Um, okay, so it, it's really up to you. You know, this is a case where you'd want to make it representative of the thing that you would want it to be made from in the final product here. Okay, so there are some options for you. Um, okay, so that is the Revolve and Loft tools. Uh, good luck. Oh, I didn't save it off. I'm, I'm, I've told myself that I'm going to save off every one of these as an example to you students and the rest of these because it's just good practice. You always want to save right when you open and of course you want to save at the end. And you want to have a good naming, good solid naming convention. 
Okay, uh, that is it, the Revolve and Loft tools. Good luck.